Hi, this is Sarah Thompson, the OSU Cascades Instruction Librarian, here with an overview of Evernote and how you might use it for your courses. Now to begin with, why would you want to use Evernote? Well, a lot of us have little bits of paper all over the place. We have ideas and notes to self and reminders. Sometimes they get lost and sometimes we don't even see them because there are just so many. If we're lucky, we might graduate on to using digital notes. And here too, there are things scattered all over the place in lots of different programs. It's hard to know how to keep these organized. And that's where Evernote comes in handy. It's mainly an organization brain dump tool. So this is where you can put all those little scraps of information and reminders and to-dos and things you want to read later in one place. They can be as short as a tweet or as long as a multi-part article. You can keep snaps of web pages. You can even keep things that have PDFs attached or images. And what's nice is you can go quickly through a lot of different areas, whether they have text, image, notes, you name it. The other nice thing about Evernote is you can search quickly. So here I'll search for theory in my instruction notebook and right away it brings me the notes that have theory. Also, this is an image of a poster at a conference and Evernote was able to read the words from the image and find one that was still relevant to my search. Evernote is a multi-platform tool, so you can use it on a PC, on a Mac, on your smartphone, or your tablet. And since it's syncing out to the Evernote server, if anything happens to one of your devices, you'll still be able to get into your notes just by logging into the Evernote website. So, if you do want to use Evernote, how do you get started? Well, here on the Evernote website, you would go to create an account. You can create a free account, and that will get most people what they need. If you wanted more memory and a few more options, you could go premium. After you create the account, you'll need to go to your email that you gave Evernote and click on the link in the confirmation email so you can finish the registration process. So, now that you have an Evernote account, how do you access it? The simplest way is probably here on the website using the web sign-in. And that's what this looks like. Now the web sign-in just has a couple view options, snippets and list. Most of your notes you'll be able to view here and use, but there are some, a few more options in the desktop version. To see that, you would come here to the Evernote website, and under their products menu, you'll see a link to the main Evernote app. By default, they'll show you the version for the computer you're on, but if you use this little drop-down menu, you'll be able to get to other versions and mobile versions whatever you want to use. Now once you have Evernote installed, it'll look something like this. You have a few more viewing options, and you'll also be able to use um, other apps like Snitch and things like that. Actually, I think it's called Skitch, but you'll figure that out later. So now that you have Evernote, you need to figure out how to get stuff into it. Some of the simpler ways are just using the New Note buttons, either here on the desktop app or the New Note button here in the web app. There are also some great products here on the Evernote website for using Evernote in different ways. The two that we're going to look at in this video are the Evernote Web Clipper and Evernote Clearly. So the Evernote Web Clip Clipper is basically just a browser plugin. You can use it in most of the major browsers, and if you've had me come talk in any of your classes, you already know that I really recommend against using Internet Explorer. Try to use Firefox, Chrome, Safari, things like that if you can. So once you've got the Evernote Web Clipper installed, let's say you're on an article like this one. Here's my Evernote Web Clipper, and here's Clearly which is also a browser plugin. Now, I'd like to keep some of this information in my Evernote notes, but I don't want all this stuff here on the sides. So there are a few different options. Try to play around with them to see which one works best for you. The first one is just highlighting, say, a snippet of the web page that you want. If you right-click on it, you should see here in the menu Evernote Web Clipper, and it'll offer to either save just the web address or the selection that you've highlighted. Now if I want more than just a snippet of it, I could come up here to Evernote Web Clipper, click
click on that and by default it offers to just save the web address of this article that I'm looking at. But I can come here to the drop down menu and either do the full page or ask it to save the article. And then Evernote will give me a preview of what it's highlighting as the article and I can use these controls here to expand or decrease that selection. If I'm happy with it, I can add some tags or a comment, or I can leave those plain and just save the article. Evernote will let me know when it's done clipping it, and often it will give me some related notes in my notebook, should I want to go view those as well. Now, the other th thing that we wanted to look at is Clearly, and I really love Clearly. I use it a lot. Like I said, we probably just want the content, not all the extra stuff. So if you're on a web page like that, you click on Clearly, and it makes this nice, clean version for you. Still with the information at hand, still with the links as links, but without all the other stuff on the side. You can come here to the Clearly sidebar, and if you'd like a different theme, say you're reading in bed with the lights out so you're not disturbing your spouse, you can make the screen a bit darker by using the Night Owl theme. Also, you can make the text larger or smaller, depending on how much you want to see at once. I'm going to go back to Newsprint, and the other tool I wanted to show you here, just in case you're the kind of person who likes to mark up your articles with highlighting and notes and so on, you can do that with Clearly as well. So let's say I'd really like to highlight this to remind myself of it later. I can come over here and just click that highlight, and it'll give me a nice visual of the parts that I want to keep for later. You'll see there's a check mark on the Evernote part of the toolbar. That means that it is clipping it to Evernote so that I can go back to my default notebook and find this later. If I want to go back and see what the actual article looks like, I can just use this arrow at the top and we are back to the original. So we've looked at signing up for an account. We've looked at where you can get into Evernote and how you can add content to Evernote. Once you have content in Evernote, the next question becomes, how do you organize it? At the most basic level, you'll have a default notebook and notes. And for some people, this is all they really need. You can also have multiple notebooks. You can put multiple notebooks in what's called a notebook stack. And you can use tags to organize all of these notes across whichever notebook they might be in. Let's think about some examples. So here in my Evernote, you'll see that I have several different notebooks, and I have some of them in a notebook stack called Projects. I also have other notebook stacks below for other areas that I want to keep notes in. These up here above are standalone notebooks. They're not in a stack, and these are what I personally use to process incoming information. Now, going back to our example, let's say for school you're keeping some notebooks and you have a hobby that kind of goes across both your home life and your school life. Let's say your hobby is training therapy dogs. So you might have that in your home notebook, but you're also writing a research paper about therapy dogs for a class. So how do you know where to put the notes about therapy dogs? That's where tags would come in handy. With tags, you would be able to just use a therapy dog tag and then find those notes, whether they're in the school research notebook or the home notebook, and you'll find them all in once. You can even save searches like for tags into the shortcuts part of the Evernote sidebar. If you need more help with using Evernote, take a look at the Evernote Getting Started Guide on their website. They have them available for most of their major platforms. Most of the guides include videos, tips, and other great pieces of information about how to get started and how to really make the most of this platform. And again, if you need any questions, feel free to email me, sarah.thompson at osucascades.edu.